came back out and my car was gone. Gone. Tracking where your stolen car really ends up. It's still got its Ontario plates on. That's something that we aren't going to be able to repatriate back to Canada. How come it's so easy? Your marketplace starts now. Can you turn it? Nice one. You came last year, you said. We're on the hunt for a good used car. Yes, yeah, yeah, on the lights. And our search has taken us all the way to West Africa. <laughs> to these car lots and gas stations in the Nigerian city of Lagos. The papers are in order. Of course. The cars we want aren't just used, they're stolen. From driveways and shopping malls in Ontario and Quebec. When did this one came to Nigeria? It came in December, December 4th. December 4th of December, uh, two months ago? Yes. We send out a team of researchers undercover with clues of what to look for. It doesn't take long. Very, very, very clean. And there's nothing really clean about this car. Just look at the vehicle identification number or VIN. That's what we did, then ran it through a website that lets you search for cars reported stolen. And it is. Same with this Honda CRV, both made in and boosted from Canada. Check out the sticker from a dealership in Montreal. Yes. This Ford F-150 pickup truck is also stolen from somewhere in Ontario. And can there be any doubt about this Lexus RX350 still wearing its Ontario license plate? A quick search confirms the crime. How these vehicles got to Nigeria and how we found them is an alarming tale that often begins in the middle of a Canadian night. It's 2.49 a.m. in West Toronto when thieves drive by the first time. So take me through it. Like, when did all of this happen? That was a Thursday night overnight. Both my son and I were sleeping. We're watching with Natalie Cara as her 2020 Lexus is being stolen. So first thing was, yeah, looking at the surveillance camera. And then you're even more in a shock when you see this going on. It's like, wow. The bad guys are now working on Natalie's car using what seems to be a lock pick to get in. There we yeah. go. Now they're inside. Yeah. Looking, looking around. around. And in they go. One of the thieves pauses to reach under the dash. You'll later learn why. After 20 seconds, that same thief opens the door and places something on the driveway. It's a steering wheel lock known as the club. I had uh, heard about some thefts around the area, and uh, I decided to buy myself a club, a wheel club, to prevent, just to be on the safer side. It didn't work. It didn't work. 20 more minutes pass, and then lights flash, and the engine starts. The other guy is leaving. Mm -hmm. My car is ready to go. Oh, my gosh. <sighs> What's that like, waking up? I was in a shock, in a panic, and now what? I'm like, now what? What am I doing? Car owners across Canada are waking up to the same reality, empty driveways and home security footage that tell remarkable stories. It's estimated a vehicle is stolen in Canada every six minutes, and scenes like this are costing all of us a billion dollars every year. Every day you can read somebody somewhere got their car stolen, and sometimes 
you hear like three or four cars a night. And I'm like, this is not a joke what's happening. How come it's so easy? Why aren't car makers, insurance companies, or the police doing more to stop it? Add Judy Heyer's voice to the victims. I drove here to pick up a coat and that I'd ordered. She took her brand new Honda CRV to the local shopping mall last fall. And I got out of the car, I locked it, put my fob in my purse. Um, I walked in to the mall. I was probably in there 20 minutes to do my quick pickup and came back out and my car was gone. Gone. It, it was an empty parking spot. I walked up and down a little bit looking around and I couldn't find it. How's it feel to be back here? I don't know. I don't feel that uh, it's a safe parking place. I think there's probably somebody here sitting in a car watching what's going on. There's little doubt Judy's car was targeted, but nothing to say exactly how it was stolen. So to show how quickly and easily it can be done. Hi, Judy. Hi. How are you? Good, how are you? We invite Judy to join us at this locksmith in Hamilton with the replacement CRV she bought with the insurance money. We've got Yasser and Mustafa here. Hi. And we brought them in because we want to show you how easy it is to steal a car. They're going to show us exactly how to do it. OK. Mustafa decides to warm up on this Chrysler 300, which he says is easy pickings. I've got the key to this vehicle. I'm going to lock it. You get into it, you steal it. Sure. <laughs> you just say, sure. It's like there's no big deal. <laughs> what do you got there? This is a lock picking tool. Pretty much for every make, yeah, there is sure. a special tool. And all I'm doing here is feeling the springs and the wafers, making sure I line up everything inside the lock, and there I am. Oh, wow. That was it? Yeah. It's like under 10 seconds and you were in. There you go, gone in 60 seconds. OK, what about the next part? How quick is that? To actually get the car going, Mustafa reaches for a tool that he says anyone can buy online for under a 1000 bucks. It's pretty much a key programmer and also a diagnostic tool. Yep. So we're going to hook it up into the car OBD, which is located down here. OK, we're going to hook up to the vehicle right now, pull up the security code from the vehicle. Um, Next, we're going to have the key that we have to program to the vehicle. Of course, it has to be a virgin. Punch in the code. And there I am. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> That's crazy, eh? Which part? The whole thing takes under two minutes. It's scary. Footage like this is what you often see in stolen car stories. Toronto police say it shows two car thieves using a so-called relay attack. The guy in the foreground is using electronics to boost the signal from a key fob inside the house, while the other guy captures that signal to open the car and get it going. This kind of tactic gets a lot of attention. That was super fast. But what Mustafa is showing us is tried and true and used a lot. Can you guys steal her car? <laughs> and he's about to show us again on sure. Judy's new CRV. <sighs> Click it a couple more times, but make sure. There we go. We got the beep. We know it's locked. Mustafa, in you go. Sir. I remember, David, this is the first time we ever done a 2021 CRV. You've never done a car like this before. 2021 CRV, we've never done. CRVs are among the most stolen cars in Canada, and this one is clearly next on the list, much to Judy's chagrin. So, two and a half minutes in, and we keep distracting you. <laughs> 
Holy moly. Not even three minutes. And he's gone. This is your new car. That's my new car. <laughs> how are you feeling watching it back out? That, that must be how it happened with my first car. How do you feel about your second car? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how I was supposed to protect my car. Who's responsible for protecting you? I, you know, I wonder who's at fault on this, and it's clearly whoever stole my car, but I feel like the manufacturers are responsible to provide us with some way of safeguarding it. And I, and I don't feel they are. That was really easy. <laughs> it was too easy. Real car thieves know what they want, preferred makes and preferred places to make off with them. For instance, I'm driving one of the most stolen vehicles in Ontario through one of the neighborhoods they're most stolen from. How do we know? Because Marketplace has been crunching numbers using raw data from Ontario's Ministry of Transportation. Here's one thing we've discovered. Criminals and their customers love the Lexus LX. One in 10 get stolen, by far the highest rate of any car around. Other luxury vehicles are also big targets, and once taken, are soon sent overseas. Though sometimes, police get in the way. Play safe and uh, everybody knows the rules. We're there when cops make their move. You're looking at a substantial amount of money, probably eighty dollars to $90,000 right there. Next on Your Marketplace. Do you have a story you think Marketplace should investigate next? Tell us all about it on email, Twitter, and Facebook. This is Your Marketplace. We're with Peel Region's Auto Theft Squad near Toronto. On a January morning when they're trying to make a dent. So there's already a number of parties in custody that other execution teams have let us know about. Project High Five is going down, and lead detective Greg O'Connor rallies his troops. Many of them have been working undercover, so we're hiding their identities. So play safe, and uh, everybody knows their roles, and we'll be back here shortly. Months of investigation has brought them here, and when this day is done, more than 300 criminal charges will be laid. They don't want us tagging along for that, though. We're there in the aftermath as a line of tow trucks brings in the day's haul. More than 200 stolen vehicles recovered through this operation with an estimated street value of more than $11 million. Among them, several of the top five stolen cars in Ontario. And inside, traces of the people they've been stolen from. A week later, we're there again when Project High Five lands another big fish. Detective O'Connor breaks the seal on a shipping container loaded with stolen Honda CRVs. Toronto Raptors? Yep, Toronto Raptors. So you can see there, it's got the license plates already left on it. They don't even make any attempt to try and conceal what it is. It's not often police beat the bad guys like this. The detective says for criminals, it's usually low risk, high reward. This vehicle that they're now lowering, like how quickly from the time it gets stolen to the time it gets loaded on a shipping container? So it can be anywhere between a couple of hours or generally a 24 hour period. Is that fast? Well Where were they headed when you intercepted them? So these were uh, headed for a rail yard that were going to be going to the port of Montreal and then uh, sent overseas. This shipment, he says, was destined for West Africa. That's four vehicles right there. And in an overseas market, you're looking at a substantial amount of money, probably uh, eighty dollars to $90,000 right there that they would get. 
we show him some of our own detective work, though he's not surprised by it. So when you talk about those vehicles, like, that's one we found in Nigeria. That's correct. In Lagos, that's the largest correct. city in Africa. It's still got its Ontario plates on. Yep. And that's something that once it is gone and has landed there, that's something that we aren't going to be able to repatriate back to Canada. Because? The Nigerian government will not let that come back. Uh, and, and the costs associated with it are extremely high. OK. So I'm just putting my phone in position. We're online with Pierre, the guy coordinating our research in Nigeria. Pierre isn't his real name. We're concealing his identity because he fears retribution from the criminal gangs behind the sales of stolen cars. So there's clearly a market for these cars that are stolen and sent over there. Totally, totally, because the fact that uh, uh, the cars can be uh, sold openly with no problem, with no problem at all, uh, that vendors can sell them and promote them openly on websites. And the fact that when you're a vendor, that you can openly show papers of a stolen car, that the buy number is still on some cars. That means that it's a market which is working very well. That Nigerian market starts here, at one of Africa's biggest ports known as Tin Can Island. Cars stolen in Canada arrive by ship, seeming to clear inspection and customs at both ends. Nigeria is a country with a lot of poverty, but no shortage of middle-class car buyers, most of whom don't know they're buying stolen vehicles, according to Pierre. This car is coming from Canada, and this seller is showing me the papers of this car, there's no reason that I will do But we know this Lexus is stolen and is going for a lot of money. We first found it on this Nigerian website called Gigi, just like our own Kijiji. The list price, 28 million Naira. That's what they call the official currency of Nigeria. It's equal to about 85,000 Canadian dollars, way more than what this car sells for in Canada brand new leaves little doubt what's driving car theft. Looking for answers. The manufacturers could certainly step up. And what happens if you, the police, find me driving what was a stolen vehicle? And I had no idea. Next on Your Marketplace. This is Your Marketplace. Just right in here? Yeah. OK, so you can show me how they actually revin a vehicle here? Is that the idea? Yeah, so it's a re Stolen vehicles aren't always exported overseas. So you and I will be able to, to pull this out. Slowly pull up. Peel Police Detective Greg O'Connor's showing me how sometimes these vehicles are revinned for use right here in Canada. So with this vehicle, you can physically see that if I just lift up, very poor quality, there's your, your fake VIN, your false VIN, as we say, and the true VIN is actually underneath it. He says stolen cars like this help fund and commit other types of crime, drug dealing, gun running, home invasions. And it could be years before it even gets detected. So Whether, that means there's other cars out there right now, just like oh this. Oh, yes. I can guarantee you there's hundreds in the province of Ontario alone that are out driving around, if not thousands, that people are operating. Many of them are being driven by unsuspecting car owners, he says, who buy them on Kijiji, even at used car lots. What happens if you, the police, find me driving what was a stolen vehicle? And I had no idea. Well, I'm going to seize that motor vehicle. And so I lose the vehicle that I just paid money for. You're going to lose the vehicle that you've paid for. Um, we're going to do an examination on it. You ultimately could technically be charged. You were in possession of stolen property. Add it all up, and this is far from a victimless crime. 
Plus, it's costing all of us a lot more in car insurance. And a frustrated detective takes a not so subtle jab at car makers. The manufacturers could certainly step up, um, but with these vehicles being stolen, they also sell more vehicles. And when vehicles need to be repaired, they're selling more in parts. So the way that multi-factor authentication will work... Some car makers are taking some steps, using multi-factor authentication in some models, just like a lot of apps do. Place your finger on the fingerprint sensor. Things like pin codes, fingerprint authentication, facial recognition, no to add more layers of protection. When we ask automakers to come and show us what they're doing to combat auto theft, they send statements instead, saying they agree that car theft affects all brands, and all of them saying, we're working on it. Not much comfort for people like Natalie. So this is the damage that was done inside the car. Oh boy, it's a lot. Although police did manage to find and return her car. So they rip the whole side, and that's where they get the GPS of the oh, car. Yeah. It took several weeks to repair all that damage. Meanwhile, just weeks after Project High Five concludes, new stats for the region show car thefts are actually up more than 50%. And the tips they tell us about using steering wheel locks, parking in well-lit areas, blocking desirable cars in your driveway and using security cameras? Well, here's what's being captured. And it isn't the criminals. For more about our investigation and our list of top stolen cars, check out our website, cbc.ca slash marketplace.